68 that you begin to see a turn. In 69, it gets stronger, and by 1970, most people are against the war. <laughs> what explains? As an anti-war movement only begins in 1967 at a substantial scale, it does not become mainstream until really 69 and 1970. So, what about the liberal media? Maybe they are the ones to blame for this. Well, historians have gone back and done an analysis of the major newspapers and magazines of the time. New York Times, LA Times, Newsweek, Time and Life. And you can do this probably with your own students. This would be you. Have part of your class look at Newsweek from 1960 to 1970. Another one to look at Life. Another one to look at Time. And the so-called liberal media overall offered support for the war in Vietnam. You don't really start seeing the kind of negative accounts or the images of Vietnam until 69, a little bit of 68. Even the My Lai massacre, which occurred, took the U.S. press about a year and a half to actually put out there because American people didn't want to hear about it. So what explains, I mean, why, what happened here? The pivotal date is 1968, because I'm arguing that, that the U.S. government did have support. And supposedly find that unrestrained war, people forget that we dropped more TNT on Vietnam, the entire tonnage dropped in World War II by a factor at least of two, and some historians four times. We're talking of TNT was dropped in Vietnam that each Vietnamese person would have 500 pounds of TNT per person, equivalent to about 290 atomic bombs that were dropped in the ocean. From my perspective, that's not an unrestrained war. So what happened in 68? This is the critical year. What well, has to do with these numbers down here? And these numbers are based upon the American soldiers serving in Vietnam. And basically from 1960 to 64, it was a relatively modest 17,000. 1965, there's a major escalation from 17,000 to over 100,000, correct? Then 1966, 300,000. Still, support for the war. 1968, 500,000, half a million. Now there's some murmurs going on especially in college campuses, and then 69. So we see there's a rather significant engagement here, but still support. What happened? We well, have to look at, at who is serving in Vietnam. If you look at the first six years who served in Vietnam, what did most of those have in common? They were volunteers, like my father. So the Sands of Iwo Jima, and two days later, him and his three best friends joined the Marine Corps because they wanted to fight in this war like their fathers had done in World War II. So most of these first five or six years were willing volunteers, served in Vietnam. Now, of course, it didn't take them long like my dad to, once he got to Vietnam, realize this isn't what I was told it was going to be like. These soldiers come back home. And what do you think they tell their friends? Don't go. There, there's something really screwed up here. I mean, there's like the subculture campaign amongst in small towns talking that there's something really wrong about the war in Vietnam. Now, if the war is going so well, why do we have a rapid escalation here, right? The volunteer pool has dried up, so what does the U.S. government need to okay. go up? You need a draft. Now you would think, surely the draft is going to call opposition to the war. No, there wasn't. Draft here, draft here. Who are most of these draftees? What do they have in common? Very poor. Minority. Poor? Minority. The disenfranchised, right? They're going to college. They're not going to college. Make sense? These people who are serving in Vietnam as draftees don't have much political representation. <coughs> so they're fighting and dying in Vietnam, and meanwhile, hometown America is saying, go USA. So what happens in 1968? Well, one thing that happens, by the time you get to 68, you're talking half a million soldiers serving in Vietnam. Plus, the United States is engaged in the Cold War. We have large military bases in Europe and other places. There aren't simply enough personnel. So they changed the draft to a the lottery. Now, what happens with the lottery? Well, up until then, you can escape the draft in Vietnam, as someone mentioned, by going to college. And you could have a college deferral. 
when the lottery starts, are you are you able to escape service in Vietnam? Yeah. No. no. Now, when does that occur? 68. What's the correlation here? They're at largely the American public have been support for the policy in Vietnam, and all since 68, there becomes kind of a, hmm, we don't know if this war is such a good idea. What happened? Their kids were But who are these kids? The rich kids, the middle class, the, anyone who has money to go to college. And also the parents who have supported this war, when their little Johnny is now going to be drafted into it, all of a sudden they go, I don't know if this is such a good war. And they begin to come out in opposition to it. You see what I'm getting at? That in some ways the opposition to the war in Vietnam only occurs when middle class and upper class America are asked to fight directly. There's a direct correlation there. I would argue it's a very strong one. How about, let's just use this as a hypothetical situation. Could we say that many people are deeply re, are removed from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan? Yeah. They don't think it's a war. They don't think it's a war, right? Would that change if we argued that we need more people to fight there and we instituted a draft? Yeah. Absolutely. Would that change public? I mean, even now, Americans are ambivalent or perhaps have turned against the two wars, right? That would change very quickly, I would argue, if there was a full-scale draft. And their son, and now daughters, since age of equality, would be serving in Afghanistan or Iraq. That would be my guess. In other words, it's easy to say, go USA, when someone other's son is fighting in Vietnam. But when it comes to your children, all of a sudden you say, I don't know if this is such a good idea. Make sense? So I would argue that this perspective here does not hold up under historical scrutiny. Now, there's a problem here, too, because both of the liberal and the conservative master narratives, even though they seem to be polar opposite, are actually united. And they're united in the sense that when they talk about Vietnam, they talk about it as America's war. In other words, they both depict America as, as victim. Now, how can I show this? Well, for example here, this is George Herring's book, America's Longest War. This, you could say, is a liberal perspective of the war in Vietnam. What do you notice about the title? America's War, Longest War. Here's another one. Vietnam and an American ordeal. <clears throat> Even movies, anti-war movies, such as Platoon and Full Metal Jacket, how are the Vietnamese actually depicted in these movies? They're almost non-existent, aren't they? They're largely invisible. Most of the movies we have produced from Hollywood are about American soldiers in Vietnam and what this war did to us. <clears throat> 